Let's talk about some popular book talk books that I personally thought were overhyped. Fascinating concept, lackluster execution. I feel like this story had so much potential and it could have gone a lot farther if it hadn't been about two teenage boys and the teenage dialogue felt a little bit out of touch, a little bit forced. Was the spice enjoyable? Sure, but the main character's attraction to each other is so shallow and I just wasn't able to connect with them or this story at all as a result. There were parts of this book that reached into the depths of my soul. I loved all the references to arts and culture, but overall I just found it too repetitive. I wanted it to be like 100 pages shorter. Let me know if you want to see a part two. Boring, yawning, sloppy, lazy. These are the books that I'm going to recommend to you if I don't like you, okay? You're going to get these book recommendations. When I'm with you, my legs go weak. Hey, can you hear it? I think my heart just skipped a beat. Hey, this fake plan is getting so strong. Let me set a morning. Miss for a dollar, who seems like a terrible person? Uh, oh my god, I can't say the first person that came to mind. No, say it. I guess I. No, I can't say, say it. it. No, I'd be out of the. Say it! it. I don't say it. it. Say it. Say it. The answer is Leo Remini. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, I can't say on TikTok. It's gonna trigger people. This whole. Reduce your expectations to zero. Can I give you a big hug? No, thanks. Hi, hello, my name is Cassie. I usually review books, aka smutty books, contemporary romance, stuff like that. So if you like that, please follow me. Should be cool if you did. And um, yeah, I'm going to talk about some books that I just thought were overhyped on Book Talk. And you wait till you see the last one, because holy cow, that's going to be controversial. Coming in at number one, The Love Hypothesis. It was just okay for me. I thought it was overhyped. If you like it, I'm glad you liked it. I didn't. I mean, I liked it, but I just didn't love it. Anyways. Coming in at number two, Punk 57. Y'all acted like this was going to be the spiciest book I ever put my hands on, and it just was not. That's all. If you liked it, great. I just didn't. We can still be friends. The way I know when I show this book, y'all are gonna come after me. Fine. It was just okay. It was just okay. It was spicier in the first book than the second one. And like, I don't... Should I keep going? And make me wanna say Damn And yeah, you know what's up Ain't nothing I won't do I won't do for your body So give me all you got Right now I know I'm yours, baby So come give me love You know you're my baby So come give me love I never felt nothing quite like this I get a high every time we When I'm with you, my legs go weak. Hey, can you hear it? I think
thing my heart just skipped a beat. Yeah. This feeling is getting so strong. Love me till the morning, love me all night long. There's something special about you. You're the one that I want. Let's talk about some more popular book talk books that I personally thought were overhyped. As someone who has read a lot of memoirs from musicians in this era, I was expecting a wild and outrageous story. These characters are iconic rock stars from the 70s, but this work of fiction was far more tame than any of the real life autobiographies I've read. I just wish the boundaries of the genre had been pushed further because I feel like nothing really happened in this story. The majority of this book is just an endless loop of two characters making the same mistakes over and over again and refusing to change. That combined with the female main character being completely devoid of personality or any meaningful character traits made this a really frustrating read. This just felt a little too idyllic. The characters don't seem to face any real consequences for their actions, which makes for a sweet, fun story, but I just wanted it to be a little bit more realistic. I also didn't feel the chemistry that I need to really enjoy a romance, and the gratuitous swearing got old pretty fast for me. I can probably do even more of these, so let me know if you want to see a part three. Here are the worst books I read in 2022. If you love any of these, I'm so happy for you. In fact, I envy you. Please don't hate me. I read 41 books this year and these were just not it. Let's just start off with the disappointments pile. These were the books that I had way too high of expectations for. Honestly, this is kind of my own fault. Sadly, they just didn't live up to it. Colin Hoover had an appearance on my best books of 2022, but also made her way onto this list. It starts with a disclaimer. This is not a bad book by any means, but it's also not that good. The real question is, was it really necessary? This is fan service at its finest, and I'm a fan. However, did we need an epilogue this long? Moving on from that, this one, this was just okay. Three stars, nothing that special. TikTok just made me believe I was going to love this, and this was just okay. We are getting into two star territory. My last read of the year. Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. I still can't believe it, I actually didn't love this book. Book Talk really did me dirty with this one. I thought this was going to be a new all-time favorite romance, but it was just boring. There was no build-up to it. Two stars. Another romance that I can't believe I didn't love. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sad. It actually hurts me to have this book on this list, but... It just gave me the ick like no other. Twisted Love. You know I love the rest of the series, right? Let's make that clear. I like the series. This first book though, the love interest, not my type. Couldn't stand him. I love the main character and I would still recommend this series. Just make your way through this book. The rest of the series is so much better. The singing scene. If you know, you know. Traumatizing to say the least. <laughs> another book that I really wanted to love and I'm definitely giving this author another chance in the future. Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. Gave it 2.5 stars. This story actually restored my faith in humanity. I love the overall message of the book, but the humor it just didn't do anything for me. Lastly, this book, this was the worst surprise of the year because I was such a huge fan of the first book in the series. Not reading the last book. Very, very close to a one star, this one. Couldn't care less. Can we just go back to the first book and stay there forever, please? On a happier note, at least we didn't actually have a one-star book this year. May 2023 be a better reading year for all of us. I'm gonna show you some of the books that I had really high expectations for, but that let me down, but I need you all to promise me that you're not gonna cry and that you're not going to send a hitman after me, thank you. The first one was really bad, so I don't know what I was expecting with this one, to be honest. Um. I was really sad about this because I really liked the love hypothesis, but Love on the Brain was really just fan fiction of it. So yeah, a letdown. This one is on me, 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 because my friends who recommended it to me told me it was a sad book. Um, I still read it. This is my fault. House Tell Ten Sorrows. This book was um, boring. Another one. This one was a snooze fest. How is this some of y'all's favorite book? I will never understand. This one. It wasn't bad. I would still recommend this one. Especially in like this sort of season because it's really dark and entertaining. It's just not what I was expecting. This one was really, really boring and bad and literally nothing. I retained nothing from this book. Now this is the one that's going to be controversial and I need you all to promise me that you're not going to send that hitman after me. I'm very sorry. I am. I, I really am. I tried to like it. 
I did not like the first one. I did not like this one. Telling you if popular book talk literary fiction is worth it. It's good, but definitely overhyped. Yes, but only if you're okay with body horror. Yes, but look up the plagiarism allegations. No, wasn't for me. Yes, especially if you enjoy unlikable protagonists. No, so corny and so cringe. Pretty typical sad girl book, but I enjoyed it. Read her other books instead. Yes, I highly recommend listening to an audiobook version. Okay, but I want to talk about this for a second because Throne of Glass is one of those series that if you say anything negative about it, you will have minimum 10 comments saying, just keep going, just keep going. It gets better. It gets better. Yeah, it's terrible, but like, just keep going. And that's how the comments start. And then I'll reply and be like, I've read four books of this series. I've read half of the series. I still don't like it. And then people will be like, well, you've gotten this far. You have to keep going because book eight is the best book I've ever read. Okay, but then a minute ago, you were saying you have to get to book four because that's where it gets good. I read book four and it wasn't good for me. I've stated how much of the series that I have read so many times. I have read 1,839 pages of books that for me were not good. I don't like them. And still, when I say that, people will comment and be like, keep reading, keep reading. It's the best series of all time. For me, it's, it's not. You know what really makes me want to do something? Someone telling me I'm not allowed to. So honestly, while I don't often DNF books, I have had a fair share of disappointing reads this year, so I'm going to share those with you. And for my book babes who are not interested in seeing negative reviews, this is your opportunity to scroll on. I love you. No, for real. If you're gonna get mad because I'm talking about a specific book that you like, now is the time to leave. I love you. Goodbye. Also, potential spoilers for any books I'm talking about. Okay. This one I was actually really scared to talk about when I first read it. And I've also very much so enjoyed previous books by the author. So it was a bummer, uh, Say You Swear by Megan Brandy. The pacing wasn't my favorite, and the twist made me want to shove my head through a wall. That is just the kind of angst that does not work for me. I almost DNF'd when it happened, and the fact that that other dude, I don't even remember his name, did not get what was coming to him for the shit he tried to pull was very upsetting. Now the fact that Noah is some people's all-time favorite book boyfriends totally tracks. I loved him. Did not love the book though. Moving on. This one was really depressing because I love the author and I arc read this book, but it was Tyrant by Sarah Bailey. I love the Four Horsemen series. Those characters had so much depth and I loved the development of their relationship and it felt like the opposite happened here. It felt like there was a lot of telling rather than showing when it came to the characters. The dude is supposed to be this ruthless mafia man and it just didn't really show that in his actions. It was very insta-love and I just didn't love the development of their relationship. It was weird to me. Anyway, moving on, Silent Waters. This one had so much potential. I loved the beginning of it. I loved the setup, but my God, the time jumps. Uh, 18 years of the female main character never really moving forward just upset me. I didn't feel like there was a good enough reason for the characters to not be together during those lengths of time. It seemed silly. Her mom treating her like absolute garbage for 18 years and then that being resolved by just being like, oh, well, she was doing her best. No, 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 no. Absolutely the fuck not. That bitch sucked. I also remember it wrapping up far too nicely for the actual plot, but at that point I was already just like really mad about the whole book, so. The Wildflowers duet, specifically the Resurrection of Wildflowers, no one can convince me that second book needed to exist. It did not. I have a three minute long video about how much I did not like this duet, but you cannot convince me she should not have told that man about her kid. Fuck that. And they took away that man's entire personality and all they gave him was someone who loved the female main character. I didn't like that. Didn't like it at all. And last but not least, this one made me sad because I had it on my TBR for like a long time and I wanted to read it a lot. The author also seems really sweet. I follow around here and I really tried. I finished book one. I did not like the female main character, like at all. But I hope it would get better. I mean, it got a little better in book two, but not enough. I think I was in the middle of a scene where like, she was just being really mean to the male main character for something. Like I'm always here for a badass female character, but she made some silly goofy choices for someone who's supposed to be so smart and independent. And she really was just fucking mean. That might have been intentional. She might have grown. After a book and a half, I didn't want to follow her anymore. Anywho, I love you guys. I love books. I love authors. And not all of us are meant to love the same things. And I hope that's okay. Goodbye.